Alright you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another rugby video. We're at a little bit of a different setting this morning. We're actually down at the touch fields. The rugby fields are being taken today. So here we are. Today's video is going to keep in line with my previous one which was how to play fullback in the game of rugby league. Now these videos have, have come about because I'm playing again. I'm playing rugby, I'm playing rugby league um, and I, I'm loving it. So I play in the outside backs, you know, if I'm talking about rugby union, I play in the outside backs, centre, wing, uh, fullback, and the same goes for rugby league. I'm either in the centres, out on the wing, or, or back at fullback. So that is, you know, that sort of outside channel, that outside sort of semicircle is where I'm really used to playing, and it's where I have the most knowledge. So I want to impart that on you guys. Today's video is going to be about how to play on the wing in rugby league. So let's roll the intro and get into it. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up Alright, so in today's video we're going to talk about playing on the wing. Much like uh, playing at fullback, the skills needed are relatively the same. It's just the gameplay situation, reading the game, space awareness, where you want to be on the field is going to be different. So we're going to talk about the skills needed, we're going to talk about attack, and we're going to talk about defence, where you'd want to be on the field and what you want to think about. Skills needed. Just as, just as, you know, just as any outside back needs these skills. We've got speed, we've got agility, these days wingers are a lot bigger and more powerful than they used to be, so power, speed, power, agility, you're a good winger. As well as that, on both attack and defence, you're going to want to be able to catch the ball. You know, on attack they're going to be doing chip kicks um, that you could well catch over the line and score. On defence, obviously the opposition is going to be kicking down into your part of the field, you're going to have to catch the ball. Um, have good space awareness when you get that ball, just as, just as you would if you were the fullback and uh, then you've got to make a decision on what you want to do. So with rugby league, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's better for the wingers, it's easier for the wingers than rugby union because when you get the ball, even if you are isolated, you're still going to retain that ball. You know, if you're a winger in the game of union and you get the ball, you know, you might get around a defender, run 50 metres down the field, then get tackled, all of your team have to get to you before the opposition do and help retain that ball before the opposition does or else you're going to lose the ball. You're going to get isolated and that's not what you want to do. Rugby league, you get that individual run, keep going. Because when you get tackled, you know, you, you've probably got four or five seconds to play the ball. But the reality is, is that you retain it. So anyway, skill set, that's, that's basically what you need. Let's talk about attacking play. When you are on attack in rugby league as a winger, you're most likely going to be, you know, either on the right side or the left side. But the great thing about rugby league is that you don't have to stay there. You know, like I said, because of the fact that every, after every tackle it gets reset, you can effectively come in, take the ball up, get tackled, have your team, you know, recycle the ball, keep playing another play and go back out to your wing and, and, and stay in position. So with that said, personally in the teams that I've played and also in the NRL, um, I'm always watching this because I'm a fullback, I'm a winger, so I watch what they do in the game. And what they do is, usually when you're on defence, the opposition will kick it down, Let's say you're within your, your 20 metres, so between your 20 metre line and your goal line, you've got the ball. First tackle, you get tackled. <laughs> hey mate. Oh. Take a drink. Yeah man, yeah. Tutorial. <laughs> just, oh man, just, um, just, uh, I've got a YouTube channel. Sport. Rugby, oh, rugby like league, union or rugby? Uh, league today, but oh. both, both. So, yeah, just trying to help out the youngsters with a bit of a tutorial. Any professional league sides you go for? In the NRL, yeah. Warriors. Oh, I'm right. from New Zealand, so. <laughs> of course, man. Of course. Yeah. Nick minute. Alright, so as far as attack goes, you know, there's basically two periods of a set of six uh, where you're going to have to really think about what you're doing. Now, when I watch, you know, it, personally in my experience, in my teams that I've played for, when I watch the NRL, when I watch any league, I'm always watching the outside backs, the wingers and the fullback, to see where they are on the field, to see what they're doing. And what I notice is that when you receive the ball from a kick, 
from the opposition, you might be camped you know, down in your, your, your 20 metre zone, so between 20 metres and your goal line. On those first two tackles, you're going to want to get the most metres possible. You're going to want quick metres, quick recycled balls, so you can get, get yourself back up that field and get in a position to you know, make an attacking move to try and score at the end of that set of six. So with that said, on the first and second tackles, as a winger, you're going to be looking to come in and take those balls up. All right, not like for example, if the ball comes back, it's probably going to be either the winger or the fullback that gets the ball and takes that first run up. When the person gets tackled, if, if it's not you, as a winger, you should be coming in, either taking the scoop, so taking the dummy half and, and running, or being that first receiver. So that if the dummy half goes to the ball, you know, you're going to be running on at pace so you can really, really get some quick meters. All right? And that is called the red zone. All right? That's what we call it in my team, it's called the red zone. Uh, when the ball's camped down on the first and second tackle, we'll call red zone. That means the wingers and the fullback get in there, even the centers get in there. You know, what, the guys who haven't been trucking the ball up, back up and down the field, which is basically the outside back. So for those first two tackles, you want to really get in there and make some meters. Now, the third and fourth tackle is most likely going to be possibly a forward, possibly, uh, you know, like a tip on move, maybe a, a, a wedge or a, a double round or something like that. Anyways, when it gets to the fourth and fifth tackle, that's when you are really going to have to sort of switch on again and start looking for the ball. So obviously in the game of league, if you are within 40 metres of the opposition's line, you're most likely going to put in some sort of a kick um, on that last tackle for the wingers or for the fullback, for the centres to try and run onto it. Um, with that said, if you are out on the wing, you're going to have to start looking for that ball. You're going to have to start you know, spying, spying the holes so that if the ball is kicked over into the in goal area, you can sort of swerve around the defence easily to try and get to that ball first. But I mean, if their fullback and their wingers are good defensively, they will already be in position to try and cover the kick. So your your only option is really probably going to going to be you know jumping higher than the opposition winger. So if you've got hops, man, if you've got if, if you've got speed, agility, power, you're most likely going to be able to jump high. So I would, I would say practice jumping um, in the air and actually catching the ball above your head. Now that is associated with AFL. Um, it hasn't been huge in the game of rugby league and I think that's just the fact that they don't want to risk losing the ball. They don't want to risk you know, fumbling the ball but the reality is, is that if you can catch the ball up here as opposed to here, you've just given yourself probably another 60, 70, 80 centimetres worth of reach and that's huge in the game. So, you know, that's attack. All right, let's go on defense. Defensive work is huge for a winger. Like I talked about in attack, there is two you know, main parts of the defensive set of six that you're gonna to have to be thinking about. In the first two, three tackles, you're gonna to wanna to stay in your position. It's different from being on attack. You, you don't wanna come in, all right, because you're on defense now. You're gonna be marking up on that winger. You know, if he does come in for a couple of runs, stay in your position. Your inside man and, and the, the guys inside him will cover him, all right? Stay in your position, make sure that that winger never, ever, ever can get outside of you, all right? So that space awareness on defense between you and your touchline is gonna to be huge. If you can, you know, you've got, the, you've got the attacker coming towards you, all right? I know that if I've, you know, it's about five meters in front of me, I know that I can probably give myself about five meters to the side comfortably to, to give me enough time and enough space to cover him, right? Let's say I, I move this way, I had 10 meters that side. Well, he's got a lot more of a chance to get around me. So that's, that's on me to see that, cover the space, and make sure that he's not gonna get around me, right? You've gotta have confidence in your man inside of you. The winger and the center is always, always, always gotta be talking to cover those kind of moves, all right? That's in the first three tackles. When it gets to tackle number four and five, that's when you know, you've really gotta start watching. Tackle four, regardless, you should really start, start to uh, start coming back. We want to cover those kicks. Their playmaker is always going to be looking for that long kick, right? And there's a, such a thing in the game of rugby league as a 40-20. Now what that is, is when the attacking team is within their 40 meter line and they kick the ball down the field. If it happens to go out past your 20 meter line, they retain the ball. The ball comes all the way down the field to where it went out. It goes five meters in and they start again. So with that said, as a winger, it's gonna be in your best interest to make sure 
that the opposition never ever ever gets a 40-20 because that can really really stuff you up. Now a 40-20 they're most likely going to do it when you don't expect it so probably in the first second or third tackle in which case you know what can you do if you don't expect it you can't get back in time what can you do but on that fourth and fifth tackle you should be really looking across to your other winger you should be talking to your centre you should be talking to your fullback making sure you guys are starting to drop back to cover the, 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 the touch line to cover the ball so it's going to be up to you guys to, co to cover those lines to make sure you collect the ball don't fumble it you know bring it back towards the centre of the field and start your set of six so the winger is you know it's it's funny when you do play like club rugby um, when you've when you've got a um, you know someone who's new possibly uh, a, a bit of a rookie they'll usually be put on the wing won't they but the reality is is that you know the wings not the easiest position to do if you don't have good space awareness you can be letting in tries you know every every set um, if you don't have enough pace, you can be letting in tries every set, you know, so so those rookies that you bring into the team don't, don't necessarily put them straight out on the wing guys, you know, get them get them in the get them in the middle Get them tackling uh, Because the, the other thing about being on the wing is that you can go missing I mean wingers go missing in the game You can you can have a star winger and they won't even touch the ball because of the fact that they're not coming in for those tackles you, you, The game is in your own hands in the game of league man you can always get a run when you want. In the game of union, if you're a winger, you're stuck out there. In the game of league, it's up to you. So, you know, that's what I want to say. I want to say, good luck. I want to say, if you guys are in the outside backs playing league, I want to say, kill it out there. I want to say, work on the fundamental skills that you need. Power, agility, speed, jumping, ball control, space awareness, kicking, you know, it's all there. So with that said, good luck and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoy. Peace.